In the late 1970s, Kunihiko Fukushima sketches out an algorithm. It's a solution to a computing problem that, in some ways, won't become practically relevant for another 40 years. But Fukushima knows he's onto something. When computers catch up, the schematics on his desk will help move artificial intelligence from the domain of fantasy to reality. After years of studying the human visual cortex, Fukushima has created a way for machines to do what we do best, to see the world, recognize patterns, and learn. Japanese-born Fukushima began his engineering career at 10 years old, leaving the island of Taiwan for Japan when the island fell out of Japanese control after World War II. We are not allowed to bring anything except one baggage for each person. So because I didn't have anything with me, I didn't have any toy. So my uncle gave me transformer and electric motor, which he was trying to make when he was young. Fukushima taught himself the fundamentals of electrical engineering from old textbooks, finished the electric motor, and by junior high school was building radios in his home. In a sense, from then on, Fukushima was always thinking about the future of visual and auditory technology. For instance, he'd earn his PhD from Kyoto University after devising a method for broadcasting 3D television signals. This was in 1966, but it wasn't until he joined NHK, the Japan Broadcasting Corporation, that Fukushima stopped asking how machines could transmit audiovisual signals, wondering instead whether computers could receive them and, more importantly, make sense of what they heard and saw. Fukushima wanted to make a computer that worked like the human brain. Recognizing images and patterns comes so easily to us that we rarely stop to think about how complex it is. Take the letter A, for example. It looks something like this, right? Or does it look like this? Or this? How about this? Your brain recognizes the letter A consistently, even though chances are you're looking at versions you've never encountered before. Fukushima understood that a pattern-recognizing machine would have to work like the brain. It would have to learn the concept of a given image, like the version of letter A you imagined a moment ago, and compare this conceptual understanding to real-world observations. At first, we didn't know anything about neurophysiology, no psychology. So we called some professors of neurophysiology to our lab, and they gave me a lecture for about one or two years. Fukushima learned all he could about the brain's visual cortex, where cells were arranged into a neural network, a kind of circuitry completely different from the electronics Fukushima found familiar. But he soon realized this new kind of wiring was perfect for pattern recognition. Fukushima sketched up a network of electronic cells arranged in layers. A camera would feed an image into the cells. Layer by layer, the cells would analyze curvature and angles, the size and position of the lines, all the while comparing it to a single memorized concept of the target. In 1979, Fukushima called his revolutionary new machine the Neocognitron. And with the help of NHK, he produced this quintessentially 1980s film showing off its pattern recognizing capabilities. After his initial discovery, Fukushima and others spent years improving the Neocognitron, giving it the ability to recognize sounds, videos, and even obstructed imagery, sometimes more capably than the human brain. Recognize any of these letters? Believe it or not, it's not a problem for newer versions of the Neocognitron. As modern computers became smaller and faster, Fukushima's discovery became a core feature of modern artificial intelligence systems. Today, Neocognitron technology gives industrial robots visual abilities. Braking and steering systems for self-driving cars, it can identify cancer under a microscope as reliably as a trained specialist and even recognize patterns in nature that point to coming natural disasters. Fukushima's 1979 Neocognitron, decades ahead of its time, is just now entering its prime. As time goes on and artificial intelligence systems continue to redefine the role machines play in our daily lives, the Neocognitron and its inventor will continue to hold a place in our cars, our pockets, and everywhere the great discovery story of humankind is told. <laughs>